the point of this is more to talk about this process to kind of for the for the community to have a bigger discussion and consider what it wants what it hopes maybe there are things that you haven't thought about yet and and this might turn you on to the when you want to appease a certain crowd you want to have a certain amount of heads turned from the general public you just have to have a decent amount of representation from street fighter 2 and they were super excited about bringing her back they were like we are invigorated this is one of the characters that is like kind of going to be a hallmark character for us like in street fighter 5 and it matched up perfectly the developers mm -hmm. were very hyped about her the community was very hyped about her she was just a huge win and so like if she's not back in, in street fighter 6 i'm going to be scratching my head A month or two ago, it was a while ago, that you rolled out a, a Street Fighter VI starting roster wish list of your own um, here on the podcast. And that actually, people really dug that. They, they were really interested in it. Um, now, I didn't necessarily agree with all of your picks, but uh, I thought it was really interesting to talk about the, this idea. And so I decided you know, to whip up... John, you don't agree with all my picks. Let's go ahead and get to your list so I can start poking holes in yours. Yeah, you know? no, that, it's, 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 it's going to be like that. Well, huh? we can't <laughs> do that until uh, we tell everybody to psycho crush the like button, of course, Boom. because that's super important. Also, while you're doing it, subscribe, comment, and tell all of your friends about Talking Block. <clears throat> Because they'll all very much enjoy it. Um, but yeah, so I have put my own list together. And it's different right off the bat because I decided uh, in these in these last couple of weeks that I think a 25-character roster is actually what we should start with. Now, you did a 20-character roster, so already there's going to be a difference there. Um, and this was actually somewhat motivated uh, not just by that previous segment that you did, but also because um, about a week or two ago, I did a segment on the... on the um, or Sorry, I did a story on the front page breaking apart a roster not by individual characters but by the games that they would come from so how many mm -hmm. characters from street fighter 2 how many characters from alpha how many characters from 3 etc because when they first showed uh street fighter 5's roster before the game was out they had broken it up into uh three divisions right it was eight characters from street fighter 2 four from alpha and four brand newcomers and i thought that was pretty interesting and so i did that article and uh, so many of the responses were i want these individual characters though and and, and they mm -hmm. still went by like these alpha characters, these Street Fighter 3 characters, but people just want to talk about the individual characters. And I have to admit that while I was writing it, I found myself listing individual characters and I had to go back and delete because I was, uh, you know, attracted to that. So today I'm going to re be revealing by game. So we'll get the Street Fighter 2 rosters chunk all at once and we'll talk about that. And then Street Fighter 3 all at once and, and, and so on and so forth. And again, some of these characters are, are, there's a lot to go by here, and I'm not married to this as like this needs to be the final roster. The point of this is more to talk about this process to kind of for the for the community to have a bigger discussion and consider what it wants, what it hopes. Maybe there are things that you haven't thought about yet, and and this might turn you on to those. So right, this is actually a big theme of our show. You know, it's why we're called Talk and Block is. It's all about the FGC discussion of stuff. Uh, we don't see actually a lot of discussions. That's why, you know, that both you and I host a show, two people, uh, is is we always want a discussion being a part of this because it's so easy to have like empirical, you know, information from one person and stuff. But and it, then you just completely lack the nuance of having two people to contribute to it. So mm -hmm. a huge part of things is why we do the show like how we do it. Yes, absolutely. Um, so Street Fighter 2. Um, before we reveal these guys, uh, Street Fighter 2 is a special game relative to the other Street Fighters because it appeals to the general masses in a way I just could not see any of the other Street Fighter uh, rosters doing so. And by that I mean the likes of Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, E. Honda, the, the original World Warriors, and I would say that extends out to the to the new challengers as well. Those 16 characters, I guess 17 if you include Akuma, um, really are, are head turners for the general public. People are going to recognize those characters more quickly than they're going to recognize the fighters from Street Fighter 3, right? And, and, and the, the same goes for 4, Alpha, all of them. They have varying degrees of popularity, but when you want to appease a certain crowd, you want to have a certain amount of heads turned from the general public, you just have to have a decent amount of representation from Street Fighter 2. And so um, I, without any further ado, I will reveal my picks here for Street Fighter 2. I put eight. So this is the, the biggest representation mm. comes from Street Fighter 2. Eight different characters. And uh, they are, of course, Ryu, Ken, and Chun-Li. No surprises there. We know that both Ryu and Chun are going to be in every Street Fighter game. And we did, a, we did an article, I'm sorry, we did a segment about Ken being a DLC character. And we've 
widely decided, I think, that he wouldn't work very much as a DLC character. People want him as part of the initial the yeah. sandwich. Yeah, you don't you don't buy a burger and then also get sold the bun later. And Ken feels like one of those very important parts of the of the package to make it Street Fighter. Um, and then beyond that, I have uh, Sagat, T Hawk, Fei Long, Cami, and Balrog. So now I've been talking quite a bit. John, what's the first thing that jumps out to you? Oh, and by the way, Why? he hasn't seen these either. He hasn't seen these, yeah. so he's seeing them at the same time you are. And uh, it sounds like you have something that you want to ask. Why T Hawk? Like, mm. yeah. So I mean, I, I, I've I've got an idea, but like uh, T Hawk, like he, he's he's just never been good. Like, and he's never been kind of a standout character. Like, he's there. He's someone you can throw in, but like, it just immediate my reaction is kind of like, why him? Yeah, there are, okay, so we just talked about like Ryu and Chun, and those are like non-negotiable for whatever reason. They're so charismatic, they're so iconic, you just, you can't really get by without putting those characters in. There's only a few, and that might really be the only characters that really uh, uh, adhere to that, but there are many characters that have a, a decent amount of charisma that could get skipped once or twice over, but would be good to kind of come back and get reinvented because they are on their way, so to speak, to becoming more solidified charismatic characters of the Street Fighter universe, T-Hawk is certainly not the most popular. You're right. And he's not for everybody either. But one, you need to have some grappler representation because that's another thing that you have to really consider when you're putting these uh, th these rosters together. It's like you got to have different types of characters ready, for, ready to go at the start for all the different types of players that might want to play your game. Now, usually that's, of course, uh, achieved through Zangief. And you'll notice I do not, do not have Zangief on here. In fact, yeah. I do not have a handful of characters that are, are fairly iconic and we can talk about those in a second but um t hawk gets brought up an awful lot and he gets brought up in this light of that he hasn't gotten a, a a fair shake quite yet because when he does appear he's attractive i remember as a uh he's attractive as a character yeah. i remember when street fighter 2 uh was was first out and i was a little kid t hawk was for whatever reason one of the characters that i was most attracted to playing i thought he was really cool um and and i couldn't i, I don't remember what my you know six-year-old brain was thinking at the time as, as to why but i remember it really came through as such and i've seen that as people talk about characters like him it's like give him a gun give him a chance make him a little bit better i mm -hmm. think he's visually a cool character um and i think he checks that grappler's box or I, I partially checks it um i think people want to see a strong version of t-hawk that doesn't mean i want him to be the best in the game in fact i don't want grapplers really anywhere near the top of the tier list but i think t-hawk could be invented uh with a really cool like you know kind of updated design still a grappler and uh given a fair shot here in street fighter six he wasn't in street fighter five at all he's had his time in the bench um bring him on back but what yeah, would you I, say against him I, I i would actually you know my case for him actually would be um something similar to what they did with birdie uh i i think that they, they oh, make him fat yeah they, they make <laughs> the fat. big case against um t hawk is i just don't think his move set is interesting enough as it is uh he has a few interesting moves but they're they're too much overlap with what zangief does and they're not differentiating enough for him they're just all about getting in that's what t hawk is you know he's got the condor dive he's got the condor spire he's got all that stuff that's just based around getting in you think that you know maybe if they give him a gun or something like that um that you would have some kind of uh, diversity to his gameplay, like what Capcom did with Birdie in Street Fighter V. Uh, Alpha Birdie is a very different character than Street Fighter V Birdie, like just kind of how he plays and what he does. He, he's far more of a brawler, you know, grappler archetype. Uh, and they really reinvented him and did a great job with him. They incorporated his chain with some time. Like they, they made interesting moves with Birdie. They made him very compelling. They would have to do something very similar with T-Hawk, in my opinion, and then that would be the biggest case for him to get in the game. Uh, if they take his existing moveset and port it over, I'm about as dead set against that as possible because uh, T-Hawk's core moveset is proven to be a losing approach in Street Fighter because they've had uh, great opportunities for him in like Super Street Fighter 4 and Alpha where he was introduced, uh, it was, I think it was Alpha 3 they put him in, um, uh, maybe one of the, the latter games, I'm trying to remember, mm -hmm. but... Um, uh, they they put him in those games and he just did not ever make that impact. And so, yeah, it's it, I, I want to see them kind of do something different with him, basically. I think that what we're describing here is probably the case for a handful of characters. We might find ourselves saying that, you know, the, basically the T-Hawk story applies to some of the other picks on this roster. Because um, what you have and what, what seems to be the case is that there's a character that has some substance to them. Like they, they have a fan base, they, they people have liked them, they haven't been a favorite, and maybe the reason why is it's 
I'm sure multifaceted, but for T-Hawk, it's like he's never really been able to get the job done. You know, even in SF2 when he had a, a basically like a, an inescapable uh, option select, it was hard to do, right? But even then, he wasn't the best character in the game by far. In fact, I think he was still like maybe the worst, right? Or really far down there. And and so it's all he's always been seen as having to have like this ridiculous uphill battle, and, and that's probably a turnoff for people. But there is the chance because... And, and this is actually a point I was I was thinking of when I was putting this together. The characters that people are apathetic to, that's the worst case scenario. The ones that they hate, slightly less bad, but still pretty bad. But the ones that they kind of feel bad for, that's like a level above um, um, those first two levels. And I think that's where you have the most potential for improvement. You can't just do all of those characters because you really need ones that already have momentum. But this Street Fighter VI... Uh, and and T Hawk's next appearance could be the one that clicks him over from being that character that everyone's like, oh, he's just almost there. To yes, they've found the way to do T Hawk right, and I think the community wants a T Hawk done right. That's what th there it is. That's what it feels like the community talks about when they say, give T Hawk a gun. Oh, we still like him. Oh, I feel bad for poor T Hawk. It's like they want a version of the character that's been done right. They haven't quite got there yet, but they haven't done so in a way that's made people apathetic or hate him. So mm -hmm. give T-Hawk a chance. Give T-Hawk a gun. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Um, I, lo I love, uh, and just uh, quickly, I think um, the other characters there, they, they kind of, uh, we can get into details about all of them, but uh, I just wanted to say that I, I, I've missed Fei Long, and I didn't think I would, but his name has been around in Street Fighter V since the very beginning. The first stage they show has Fei Long's name prominently on that, on that bus and such. And um, I, I played against Fei Long quite a bit in Street Fighter IV and realized that I value his play style as a, as a um, kind of a neutral footsie type character uh, a huge part of this is what type of game is street fighter 6 going to be and we don't really know you know so like maybe certain character types will will jive better with it and others won't you know and who knows but um but yeah at this point i i, I would love to see fei long and uh you know uh, i'm not going to go into every particular character so i want to jump uh, into yeah. our on Fei Long, yeah. just to note, we've got a whole entire video actually coming about why Fei Long should be a launch character in Street Fighter Six. A lot of reasons actually coming for me. Um, I love that pick. Uh, one of my favorite picks uh, for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into. But yeah, hey, keep, Bruce keep it rolling, Lee, you know, yeah. Street oh, Fighter man. Two. Yeah, Fei Long, gotta um, yeah. be coming back. So, all right. So the Street Fighter mm -hmm. Alpha characters that I want to uh, to bring all in along would be the likes of Rose, Karen, and Guy. A little overlap from Street Fighter V here as both Rose and Karen appeared in that game. Um, the reason I chose Rose was uh, not just for you, although that was a big part of it, but uh, also because she seems yeah. to be so... <laughs> yes, don't want to get fired. <laughs> but also because she's such an integral part of where the story is now in SF5 that I just I don't see them going into Alpha... Um, I'm sorry, going into uh, Street Fighter VI, which sounds like they might be going back to the days of Alpha. She's she's such a, a an integral part of it. I, I think yeah. they're going to have her from the very start driving the storyline. And also, we've only had her for uh, like you know a few months here at the end of SF Five. It'll probably be a few months in a year uh, by the end of it. But um, I, I'd like to see Rose a little bit more often, especially with how they've set her up. And I had never had any experience with Karen before, but. With her in Street Fighter V, like I never played her, um, like I never mained her, I should say, but I've been very impressed with what she's been because she's been a character that is allowed to be good to a certain extent, but because of the way she functions as a as a FTSE hit confirmed character, I know not everybody shares this sentiment, but she has been one that uh, I feel is is both strong and it, it's okay that she's strong because of the requirements for her abilities to be there. And that also means for some, some of the most impressive play we've seen in street fighter five is come from Karen. Yeah. And uh, um, she was and a big character in alpha. Like, and, mm -hmm. and so uh, I remember talking with Capcom, like right before Karen was announced and they were super excited about bringing her back. They were like, we are invigorated. This is one of the characters that is like kind of going to be a hallmark character for us, like in street fighter five. And, it matched up perfectly. The developers mm -hmm. were very hyped about her. The community was very hyped about her. She was just a huge win. And so, like, if she's not back in, in Street Fighter Six, I'm going to be scratching my head. Maybe it's DLC. Like, I get that, you know, but uh, maybe it's launch here, as you were pointing out. Um, yeah. Like, I think she should be on the launch roster, too. She's great. She is just Absolutely. such a big win. 
there's a whole strategy that emerges now with DLC as well. And I, and I guess I should mention this because if you look at Street Fighter 2 and you see like, oh my gosh, no Guile, no Vega, um, there, no Dalsum. It's like there's we've talked a lot about how characters can function as DLC entrants and maybe and, and business wise and, and, you know, keeping the hype of the game up. Uh, they, it makes sense to save them like Akuma. Notice I don't have Akuma. Akuma always comes in later. He is he is up there in popularity with Ryu and Chun-Li and, and Ken by no stretch of the imagination. And yet he works so well as a DLC character because we know people are all right with the delay and we know they are going to buy him and they're going to play him. And there's just like, so he's a, he's a absolutely must be a DLC character as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I, I just wanted to touch on that just a little bit, but then uh, as far as alpha goes, I also threw guy in there. I think Guy is, he's got a lot of charisma and he's one of those characters that he's not cool enough to be in every single game. But again, like T-Hawk, he took a, he took a backseat for street, for all of Street Fighter V. People bring him up. He's still cool. I don't think anyone hates Guy. They might not mm -hmm. like the way, he, you know, playing against him. He's a rushdown character. Maybe he mauls your character and such. And so I can appreciate, like, everyone has bad matchups and doesn't appreciate characters. Um, I have someone on this list later on that I absolutely loathed playing against, but I put them on for reasons beyond my own selfish you know tendencies and, and preferences um so yeah i think that people would really appreciate guy he's an awesome rushdown type of character and and thus far we don't have a ton of rushdown characters on this list and i wanted to make sure that people that wanted to play that way have an option i guess i guess cammy's yeah. sort of in there too and and by the way i just cammy because she's so popular and she's one of those characters that's easy to pick up she she serves a lot of purposes on a street fighter roster and so i know that many of us have cammy fatigue and even though the reason i put her on and i didn't initially was that i have cammy fatigue absolutely i'm sure john does too <laughs> but i think that she does a lot for the roster she's very uh, uh she's a very attractive character to play for a lot of reasons so please balance her appropriately but i also think you kind of need cammy you have to have a plethora of rushdown characters. It's impossible for modern day fighting games not to have that. You, but you want a mix of that stuff. But rushdown is one of the most important styles to have highly represented. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as you mentioned with Guy, uh, rushdown character Capcom was actually going to put him in Street Fighter Five, but they wanted a character that had kind of two different um, um, uh, styles with them. Uh, so they ended up going back to his bot, uh, his master Zeku, and putting him in instead because they didn't feel like changing up Guy and keeping his name the same was that good of an idea. And of course, if we talk with uh, Majin Tenshinhan, who who loves Cody uh, and he calls the current Cody in Street Fighter 5 an abomination on the character because of yeah. how much he changed with him. Um, yeah, there it is. So uh, I, I probably the smart choice there. Uh, if you're going to you know reinvent a character that much, you probably want to put a different, you know, different character in there instead. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's how come we didn't get guy in Street Fighter 5. So having him come back for six would be very nice. He, he's really integral to the plot, you know, and Final Fight kicks ass. So, yeah, for sure. And that's like over the likes of Cody, like you said, or, or Sodom and such. And like those characters have an argument too, but I, th I see a lot more preference for Guy. And, and I still think that the likes of like Sodom as a DLC character would work very well because the times that there were leaks for that character, uh, not leaks, but like, like there were rumors that he was leaked and such, people got kind of excited about it, engaged with it. So I think he would work well as a DLC character, but Guy would be fancier and flashier on a, on a, a launch roster. Shout out to um, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which had the sign, watch out, Sodom is behind you. So moving on here, John, what, do you, you don't remember that? I they didn't had a know sign that. that said, watch out, Sodom is behind you. Um, that is yeah. a much better game than I ever gave it credit for. <laughs> <laughs> so next up is my Street Fighter V batch. Uh, this is a little bit out of chronological order, but deal with it. Um, so I have three characters from Street Fighter V. They are Luke, of course, and then Colleen and G. Uh, Street Fighter V didn't have a ton of home runs when it came to the newcomers that were that were introduced. There were some good ones, um, but I think Luke obviously that 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 doesn't even need to be need to be explained um, or nor spoken with correct words uh, <laughs> because he's going to be the game's protagonist, very integral to the story. Yada yada. G, I also think I, I, people know I'm not a lover of of fighting against G, and I never really have been. I think they've tweaked him to a decent amount. Uh, to, to he's in a decent spot now as, as far as Street Fighter V. But beyond all of that, he's a very interesting and mysterious character that seems to be potentially connected to a bunch of other characters uh, in, in very interesting ways. They have set G up to be interesting uh, through the story more than anything else. And I think his his general design and the way he plays is still acceptable enough. Like he, he didn't he didn't piss people off beyond um, 
you know, beyond the ability to kind of come back and fall back into their good graces. So, and he also would have to probably be the boss character of, of in some capacity, or at least the sub kind of boss. And, and maybe we, we find that, you know, the, the, the big boss is someone new or, you know, someone else. Our, um, our, no, Capcom sets him up as a boss character. And then like three months later in a random Twitter post says like yeah. this other character is a boss character like that. <laughs> <laughs> but right. um, with, with G, though, I mean, again, the, the plot is heading towards his direction. Everyone's kind of hyping him up. Um, he's got enough momentum as a character, and he's another rushdown archetype, another very explosive character with a diverse moveset. You can do so much with G. Mm -hmm. I'm actually really happy to see him back. I'm actually a very big fan of the character, despite again some some issues with you know playing against him but that's that's any rushdown character in this game that's really explosive. They're going to do that to you, and it's just you know if, if they're designed well, it's totally fine. Um, and I yeah, think they it, they can get him to a good spot, right? And he also adds a, a bit of technicality. Um, he's not the most technical character, but he does. If they bring back his mechanic of having to level up and then having different routes, that's really cool. And that that definitely checks the box for a certain type of player that wants to have that level of complexity. And mm -hmm. then that level of reward is such. And then you know, if you get technical, then you can you can raise your ceiling for the kinds of rewards that happen for for characters too. You know, so kind of an anti cami uh, at least in a certain respect. And then Colleen broke through in this game and. And uh, she was someone that I, I mean, she, she was never huge, but she's been so consistent and, and she's, she's not on the back burner, not on the down low, like maybe a level above that, but because of how consistent she's been and she's become something of a waifu, I think she deserves another chance to see where that momentum will go here in, uh, in the next street fighter. I think she has proven herself and it's, you know, most of the new characters in games, if you look at these, like they're not they don't resonate often. It's usually like one character, two characters maybe of the newcomers really resonate with people. And uh, and I think Colleen is one of the biggest wins of Street Fighter V. In fact, yeah. maybe these three characters, I haven't sat in, you know, don't quote me on that for sure, but these three characters have been three of the biggest wins in Street Fighter V. When you also have the likes of like, Rashid and and like Laura and Macaulay and there. Fong yeah. and and yeah. it's like yeah, yeah not like these yeah. guys so uh, Colleen is that, great because she was so integral to the the Street Fighter Five plot like we've seen her a lot and we know the game is going there and then her story mode was great uh, she's a beautiful character like mm -hmm. there's so much momentum for her she's really cool and her voice actress uh, she does a great job with her performance so it's like yeah this is like it's all coming together this is really nice uh, I love Colleen for a pick. And she's got a style unlike most everybody else. She's kind of got her very unique, you know, and it's mm -hmm. not for everybody, but it's also something for, you know, those that, that want something a little bit off the beaten paths. And so how would you describe Colleen? Like a, um, a control a footsie, character? A footsie sort of? rushdown character. Um, yeah, like, yeah, she's she's got control, but her control mostly is extended with her, her ice storm, or, or ice hails that come down yeah. on you. That's really her defining thing. And so if you make a bad commitment against her, she's got the counters and all that kind of stuff. She'll control rush down is how I categorize her. Um, she can't just rush down like crazy like Cammy. That's not who she is. But if you give her those openings, then she can, if she can set those up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now my Street Fighter 3 picks, there's uh, three of these. This changed. This was actually Makoto, Hugo, and Dudley, but at the last minute, I changed it to Remy, Hugo, and mm. Dudley. I don't know squat about Remy, and he's sort of a unique character here. Um, he achieves a few things, like he's one of the few charge characters. Um, you'll notice there's no Guile on this list. There's also no Nash and uh, and no DJ, and I thought those characters were sort of um, like that's a particular, like a zoning charge kind of a character is uh, something that people are kind of expecting in Street Fighter. Um, I, honestly, I think Guile eventually comes in as a DLC character, but he doesn't have to start. And in fact, Street Fighter V proved that to us. Um, so I thought one at least one character can be someone that really isn't that popular you mm -hmm. know he's been around since third strike and he hasn't been back and and people have i haven't seen people cry for him um to come back that said this is one kind of like uh, uh you know kind of decently far uh, less likely bet to take that maybe that capcom can reinvent him to a degree that that brings him into that so he's a little bit on the apathetic side but as uh you know it's been 20 years more than 20 years now uh give give one of those types of characters a chance to to take a shot at things but i, I as i was looking at the street fighter 3 roster not a ton of those characters seem to be as popular as some of the other rosters and and i thought that was kind of interesting it also has a ton of new characters so there's that but um, I would, I wanted to ask what your thought on Remy was. He, he's, um, the way I would describe Remy is like, kind of like, um, 
uh, so to um, Ryu to Sagat with uh, the high and low, you know, uh, fireballs and stuff like that. Uh, Remy is kind of to Guile because he has the high and low fireballs, right. uh, and those those create a big basis of his whole strategy there. Um, so he's even more of a boom chucker than Guile is. Uh, like literally, like he does that way more often. So he's quite the interesting character. And in, and in because of um, Third Strike, um, Perry's negating fireballs so heavily. Capcom just gave him massive amounts of fireball ability that was really hard to parry, and that's what kept him kind of interesting. Mm. How they would adapt that to to Street Fighter 6 would be quite interesting. There's definitely potential there to bring him back because of how unique he is. Um, even though he's an iteration of Guile, what he does, I mean, there's a big difference between Ryu and Sagat. You know, like the community knows that. So the same kind of difference there. So it's an interesting pick. Uh, Popularity-wise, certainly not justified, but gameplay-wise, it might be there. Right. And I figured there are enough other popular characters here that I can take one shot at one that's less popular and see if we can't bring them back from the brink, so to speak, or something along those lines. Um, so that was sort of my thought process there. And I also wanted to have a representation of, of that like kind of sonic boom chucker like Guile, a charge character like Guile. Um, and so Remy really checked those boxes for me. Um, Hugo is the other big grappler, but he's closer to maybe being... Um, something of a brawler closer to abigail than zangief something along those lines um but i think hugo is hugo's interesting he's not everyone's favorite but he's kind of fun to have around um he doesn't often have the best matchups and such but he is an interesting addition and and sort of um he's nice to be able to have in your group photo you know for Mm -hmm. for the uh for the starting roster and and again um certain characters certain players are just so attracted the ones that are like i'm gonna go all in with this idea and that's like that's built in to the character and when it works i look like an like a total badass like that's that's hugo in in my experiences and uh and he's been around in three and four he skipped five but i think hugo would be a cool addition to uh to also kind of fill in that grappler um um, box yeah i'd rather uh, have hugo than abigail Um, i think hugo's moveset is just Mm -hmm. a little bit more interesting a little bit more um a little bit more well received. Uh, Abigail is a little too all or nothing, and and very much fits Street Fighter Five what that is. But the community doesn't typically like the all or nothing stuff. We're already you know banking a lot on the fifty fifties and all the other crap we do here in the community. Like dialing that up to like crazy levels, like what Abigail and other characters did, is not the best of ideas for these games. He mm-hmm. goes a little bit more of a subdued grappler. Like he he's not as intense as Abigail basically. And so I would much rather have you go back, and that means we'll see more of Poison as well, which is always a big win for me. So <laughs> there you go. And- and, uh, and then Dudley, like, I think that a lot of people are like, yeah, it's let's Dudley, Dudley took a Dudley, Dudley yeah. took a breather, but we don't want Dudley to skip more than one game at yeah. this point. Um, he's he's super cool and he might not have been the best designed version of himself in Street Fighter four. And even so players like Smug put on clinics and he was so entertaining to watch. Uh, you know, you want that aspect of the character to, to come back. Maybe you can tweak some things about him to uh, to make him a little different in other avenues. But I think that um, we are really excited to see how Dudley evolves. Took a break. Fine. Fair enough. But it's time to bring him back. Yeah. Dudley is a huge omission from Street Fighter V. I would have loved to see Dudley in that game. Uh, I don't think you can make a Street Fighter game now and not put Dudley in it. I think he's mm. that important of a character in his representative, uh, his high, low rushdown and high execution style. It's just badly needed in every Street Fighter game. But I get him being a DLC character as well. Um, it, it's it, If he's not launch, it's fine if he's DLC. But please have Dudley in this next game. Uh, he's just, oh man, he's just- You cool. can feel like yeah. the Dudley reveal. If you he's, like think of like a black screen that fades in and you see, you know, the boxing glove or the rose or whatever it is, how hype people would get for that kind of a reveal for, yes. and, you know, for Street Fighter V now or Street Fighter Six, whatever it is, a Dudley reveal would get people standing up or sitting on the edge of their seats. And just by that alone, I'm like, it's time to bring him back. You can't beat having a teacup in your hand and a boxing glove on and drinking from it. That is- And, that's and doing it gracefully. Fully. Yes. <laughs> it was such a gentleman. So. Yes. All right. And then uh, the representatives from Street Fighter 4, the, uh, these are not the final three characters because the final, uh, actually five characters would all be brand new. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But the final three characters here from the uh, already established games would be Jury, Sea Viper, and yeah, this is a little bit of a guilty pleasure, but also I Goken. think people are yeah. down to see some Goken. Maybe not to the same degree that of Dudley, but uh, well, you know, one level below that, I think Goken would be welcomed back because he was pretty cool. We've only seen him one time, and uh, you guys know that I won't. Okay. I want to see some Goken. <laughs> I have to put you on the spot now, John, and ask if Goken is a launch character. Are you going to main him? Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, I'm not super married to the idea of like you can, you know, you you you're that 
character player. Right. Um, but I would absolutely start with him without okay. question. And unless he was just, you know, just not getting the job done for obvious reasons, um, I would move away at that point. But yeah, I'd absolutely start with him uh, yeah, and, I, and try real hard, probably play him for like two years before I even entertain going to someone else. But I don't want to put, you know, too much of a, <laughs> too much of a promise in here. I don't know. Hell so. yeah. Well, no, I'm locking you in right now. Hey, I'm locked into Rose. So, and if, if Dudley comes out, we know that Stephen Dream King is going to be playing him at least for a little while. So if we get all of our mains in there, we'll see. But yeah, I love Gokin. He just is such a storied character and he's such an important part of the plot to the mm -hmm. entire game and the entire franchise. And so exploring him more, this is what gamers want. Like we want to know more about Ryu Ken and Goken. Like they did Assassin's Fist and like that got a ton of views uh, on YouTube. That was a great production they did. And then it just, it was gone. And it's like, dude, you have to bring back Goken. You have to bring him back. He's so important. Um, I, I'm massively hyped for that character. Yeah. So. No time again. And then Jury is the kind of character that I think has reached the status of popularity that she needs yeah. to be part of every Street Fighter game, um, even more so than Dudley. So, yep. um, and, and sounds like you agree there. Yeah, yeah. Jury is just too damn popular to not put in there at some point. Again, the case for DLC is fine as well, uh, because, you know, a lot of people are going to buy her, but she's just huge, huge character. Mm -hmm. And then there were a lot of flops in uh, Street Fighter 4's initial characters, but Sea Viper was very much beloved. Uh, this is that character that I did not like fighting against at all. And I actually like, you know, when Latif was figuring his stuff out that we were his training dummies. Uh, so <laughs> that might be part of it. But um, I, I think that she's got a huge following. She's she's sexy mom, spy waifu. Uh, she's she's got a cool like she's one of those characters with a high ceiling, but high technicality. And so like it, the, the, the sky's the limit in terms of how much time you want to actually put in and make work with her. But like when you do that well, and if she's well designed, that leads to some very entertaining street fighter. Um, please don't make her overly Marvel versus Capcom, but yes, we can have some Viper yeah, presence. You have to have some. Yeah. You have to have some. Well, it, well, yes. She's, she's, like this much. Uh, no, no. Well, okay. She, she's not only Marvel, she's King of fighters. Cause she's got all the different jumps. She's got all that kind of stuff. Like that has to be part of her because of her, you know, boots and stuff. Uh, I love C Viper as well. One of my favorite characters because she is the perfect archetype of, of when I talk about uh, if you're going to make a character uh, highly technical, make them very powerful. And they got that with Viper and they kept that going where Viper never fell off. Like there were times where Viper, especially, you know, Viper players complained about her being weaker, right? In Street Fighter 4. And it was like, cry me a river, you bastards, you know, because it's you you guys had so much privilege, but they so never many options. Yeah, they never got off the character. And that was good. They, they That was one of the mo the best shining examples of Capcom taking a big risk and nailing it. And, and so I, Viper is like, oh, like uh, seeing her back, especially with all the Street Fighter 4 fans we know are, that are out there. It's like having her just freaking flame kick her way onto the screen, man. That's, that's awesome. Like, so very hyped up for that character as well. Yeah. So I thought she would be uh, better than the likes of Rufus or El Fuerte and such. And, um, and there are some others that could be interchanged here, but I think that they would work pretty well for DLC um, because that's just an, a, you know, a, a matter of fact uh, part of this process now. And you want to save some cool characters uh, for DLC. So there's you know, a handful here that are specifically not on the starting roster that would be awesome uh, because you want those for DLC. Uh, but then on top of these 20, like I said, you would add another five and those would be all newcomers. Um, I didn't specify any of those except for one. I want one of them to be Gotetsu. Um, outside of Gotetsu, do whatever you want. And um, it's important that uh, it's there that, you know, if there's not enough, you know, certain character representation for however you want, you can kind of achieve that there, which is another big nice thing about um, having brand new characters. Um, so like if you need another grappler, if you need another rushdown, if you need someone mm -hmm. more technical, if you want someone brand new with a mechanic that's not usual, like Fong's, you could do that there. Um, so five other characters for a total of 25 starting out. I think that's the biggest a Street Fighter roster will have ever been at the uh, uh, on launch day um, um you can make the case for alpha 3 but that was kind of a different thing but yeah it's um, um yeah, it's uh, sure. for a, you know main entry and stuff like that usually we get 16 or somewhere around there in right. recent times right so yeah it's it's interesting because I, I was looking over i'm like so who are the long range representatives and like well it's goken it's sagat uh it's um it's uh it's Remy, you know, Sagat. it's like, oh, you've got that taken care of. It's like, okay. And you've got your rush down. You've got your, your mix of other stuff. You've got your Some control charge. characters. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's a pretty good mix. And then whatever's missing, that's where you take those brand new characters and you make yeah. them fit that role. <laughs> that's right? my options. Like a little bit. Yep. Um, well. 
but but those are things and and i do i i honestly especially in today's social climate i was like do i have enough representation of every race of every gender mm-hmm. of all that kind of it's stuff important. and like street fighter 2 only has two female characters in it you know to, mm-hmm. to begin with and of the, of the 16 17 there um i i kind of went away from that a little bit because i i know the fgc cares a bit and and there's representation here this is mm-hmm. i think this is pretty good but i would love to hear from you guys comment and think you know like is something obviously missing you know and or is something that that did i over is there an oversight? Um, what would you do? What would you change about it? What kind of roster would you come up with? We love to read the comments. We love it. We love seeing you guys engage. Um, sometimes it feels like we're, you know, we're just talking to this camera, but when you go and you see comments and you see people responding to things, it's like, man, that warms your heart. Like, no other. So I won't get too far into it, but I really appreciate how much you guys, um, you in the comments, you know, those of you, especially that routinely do so, especially you demon curse. Uh, uh, talk about this stuff and, and offer feedback and offer your thoughts. You don't have to agree and you don't have to, you know, you know, it's like, yes, sir, everything you say is right. No, not at all. Um, this is a conversation and, and that's our main goal with this is to create conversation. And so when you guys engage with it and you continue that conversation, that's why we do what we do. Yeah, Plus a bunch of other reasons, but you know. we take that feedback and we incorporate it into the website. And when we talk to developers and other stuff, when we hear something over and over again for the community, we investigate into it and see, you know, how much we can do it. And so like your comments, all this other kind of stuff, the feedback you guys leave guys, gals, they, thems, um, that all matters. And, and uh, so, you know, we really appreciate the time it takes to do that. So, um, all right. Well, all right, tell us how it, much you, how much yeah. you disagree with uh, the list in the comments. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Uh, wrapping this up here. Uh, I did want to thank the community here. We're on our 15th anniversary and you'll be able to see this, uh, this article here that John is, uh, scrolling on the screen. Cause he, John does all of our beautiful editing and stuff for the show. Uh, thank you so much for that, John, but 15 years, 15 crazy years. And, um, I get to do the job I love. Like I never thought 15 years ago, uh, I'd be waking up and talking and writing and you know, coding uh, website so I can do more Street Fighter stuff. And yet I'm still doing it. Um, it is like, this is the best job on the planet. Uh, and I just, yeah, I just want to thank everyone for like letting us do this. This is incredible. Uh, it, it just, you know, your guys' viewership, um, you know, the, the likes, the subscribes, all that kind of stuff. It adds up. Like we get to freaking do this for a living. It's, it's amazing. Uh, John, I know you've been with us for a while. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, this has absolutely been the, the third best job that I've ever had. And I'm very <laughs> thankful for it. No, no I very, very much no, no digs at Red Lobster or Chili's, man. But uh, <laughs> Ben Hose has been much better. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just, I get to, I get to, uh, talk about my hobby and, and engage with my hobby as my job. It's like, that's, that's, um, thank you for that. And, and it's been really nice and that doesn't happen without the, uh, the community. So, um, again, <laughs> everything that I just said about the, the conversation and the way you guys take what we do and, and you, you react to it and you have responses to it and, and you have input, you agree, you disagree, all that stuff. It's like we just get to carry this conversation on and, and figure out hopefully interesting ways of, of, you know, presenting the conversation to people. And, um, very, very, very thankful that that's what I get to do from, from my home, you know, here and, and such. And so, um, very appreciative of event hubs, very appreciative of the, uh, the people that read us day in and day out, check out the, uh, the videos on YouTube. You guys are awesome. And so here's to another 15 years. All right. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Um, literally making a, my dream come true. You know, we're doing this, uh, uh, I get to play, uh, uh, Rose and fighting games. I, I get to talk crap to my friends, uh, uh, and, um, I get to freaking write about it on the front page and then talk about it later on. It's just, it, this is really amazing. So, um, thank you all so much again. Uh, it, it, it just, it's a lot of heavy stuff over those 15 years, but mostly really, really positive and great things. So, um, there it is. 